this feels even bigger than Madison Square Garden. This is a lot of people. This is a lot of people. Wow, thank you very much, Atlanta. It's great to be with you. And a very special hello to Georgia. We love Georgia. And I'm thrilled to be back in this incredible state. And that's what it is. It's an incredible state with maybe more importantly, incredible people with thousands of hardworking American patriots. That's what you are. And, and I will say, these are the largest speakers I've ever seen over here. I've never seen that. I just feel sorry for the poor people that are sitting over there. You get your money back, okay? Everybody in this. Wow. They're doing something a little different here. I've never seen that before. Wow. No, I want to take care of 100%, not 99%, right? Good. You okay over there? Are you okay? So I'd like to begin by asking a very simple question. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? I don't think so. I'm here today with a message of hope for all Americans with your vote in this election. Can you imagine seven days? We, not me, we will end inflation. We will stop the invasion of criminals coming into our country, and we will bring back the American dream. We're going to bring it back. We're going to bring it back. We're going to bring it back so big and so beautiful. Our country will be bigger. Our country will be better and bolder and richer and safer and stronger than ever before. This election is a choice between whether we will have four more years of incompetence and failure or whether or not we will begin the four greatest years of the history of our country. You know, we're starting from a little bit of a with a little bit of a negative. We're starting with a little bit of a negative. They have uh, 13,099 murderers released into our country. They have tens of thousands of criminals released. 21 million people released into our country over the last few years. We have no idea who the hell they are, where they come from. It was open borders policy of Kamala. Not a great policy, not a wise. Does anybody like the idea of open borders for the world to come in? No? She loves it. I don't, honestly, I don't think she likes it. She loves, she does, she, I don't think she has, I don't think she knows what the hell she's doing. With your support on November 5th, you know what's nasty to me? Michelle Obama. She was, ooh. Ooh. I always tried to be so nice and respectful. Ooh. She opened up a little bit of a, a little bit of a box. She opened up a little bit of something. Oh, she was nasty. Ooh. Shouldn't be that way. That was a big mistake that she made. With your support on November 5th, we will achieve success that no one can imagine. We will have the strongest economy, the most secure borders, the safest cities, the most powerful military, the best trade deals. We will dominate the frontiers of science, medicine, business, technology, and space. And I'm asking you to be, for the first time in four years, to be excited about the future of our country again. Be excited. We're going to turn it around for us. But with that, I say this, uh, our country can't stand another five months of this because we're going to lose it. We're going to lose it. We got to get this thing done. And I do hear the votes are coming in very nicely. That's what I'm hearing, like to a level that nobody can believe. A level that nobody can believe. And I'm asking you to dream big again. And this will be America's new golden age. We're going to have a golden age. And Hard to believe after the four years, almost four years of what we've gone through. It's hard to believe I can even say that. Some people would say, he's got to be crazy. No, we're going to have a golden age. It's going to happen fast, too. We are the party of common sense. Remember, we are the party of common sense. You know, conservative, we're not a two. We're the party of common sense. We don't want transgender operations all over the place. We don't want open borders. 
We don't want men playing in women's sports. How's that going to work? You know, that's a big thing, the men play. And yet, I've been doing this for quite a while. I used to say, I've never done this before. <laughs> I used to get up in my first six months. And I say, well, look, I never did this before. You know, I had a good excuse. We have no excuse. But I'll tell you, nobody's ever come up to me and said, sir, it's really important to me. Would you do me a favor? Would you let men play in women's sports? Nobody's ever said it. They've asked me for a lot of things. They've asked me for better energy prices, lower cost of eggs and salad and everything, anything you can imagine. Nobody's ever said, please, sir, it's so important. Please let men play in women's sports. It's so important. <laughs> I've never, and I've never had anybody ask me about the transgender. Transgender is such a big deal, but nobody said, could you do us a favor? Could you let it be much easier for men to be able to transition to transition into women? Nobody said that to me. Now, I'm sure there's somebody, but nobody has said it to me. And if, if really, does anybody here think that we should do that and make it real easy? And nobody said, sir, it's really, really important that we have open borders and we allow criminals from every country in the world to pour into our country, that we allow prisoners and drug dealers and terrorists and human traffickers to pour into our country, sir. This is very important to us. What the hell are these people doing? They're destroying our country. Nobody wants this. I think we're going to get a really big vote. I think we're going to get a lot of Democrats voting for us. You know, one thing, I'll say it to you, because, you know, we're almost finished with this campaign. Can you believe it? We've been doing this together for nine years, if you think about it, right? For nine years. We've had the greatest — look, look, up in the little tiny corners of this big place, uh, we've had the greatest rallies in the history of the world, not just this, this country. There's never been — I mean, we filled up Madison Square Garden last night. We could have filled it up ten times. If you looked outside, you saw the — all the way back to the Hudson River. There's never been anything like it. I tell all my people that are working for me, Maybe they'll come with us because they did a good job. But the ones that won't, they want to stay in the campaign business. I say it's going to be very tough. In four years from now, you'll have a candidate and you'll have an event and they'll draw 250 people. <laughs> That's what the normal would be. If the best — I don't want to use names, but the best politician came here and so-and-so is coming here. I'd love to use a name that everybody loves, like Ronald Reagan. We love Ronald Reagan. I'll use it anyway. Why not? You'd have three or four hundred people going to a ballroom someplace, and it would be very acceptable. You're not going to have 15, 20,000 people. It doesn't happen. This is a unique situation. It's a unique point in time. It's make America great again. It's the greatest political movement of all time. But we have a lot of such great people. We have such great people. Thank you. Look at this giant look at the corners. There are people sitting in the corners. You always know if you're doing well when every little corner with those crummy seats up there they're gotten to. But every problem facing us can be solved. But now the fate of our nation is in your hands, and that's so true. Hey, hey, hey. What a rotten job. She's grossly incompetent. She's more incompetent than Biden, and I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> Next Tuesday, you have to stand up and you have to tell Kamala Harris that you've had a terrible, terrible run, that you've hurt our country very badly. You've let murderers into our country and drug dealers. You've let human traffickers in. You've let terrorists into our country. You've damped, you've accepted people from mental institutions and from jails. You've accepted some of the worst criminals in the world into our country. You're going to say, please say it, sir. I say, I will. Kamala, you're fired. Get out of here. Get out of here.
No, no. Be nice. Be nice. Be nice. You know, they used to say that with Hiller, and I'd always go, relax, take it easy. We're going to win. We're going to win, Brandon. We're going to win. Just please relax. They would do it. Every time I'd mention her name, they'd scream, lock her up, lock her up. And then the fake news. That's a lot of fake news. Look at that. That's a lot. That's a lot, Bruce, isn't it, huh? It's a lot of fakers back there. But no, it's, you know that's true. I'd say, easy, we're going to win, we're going to win. Then we won. And then they really win. What They said, lock her up, lock her up, lock her up. They scream, I'd say, easy, easy, we won. We're going to have unity. I could have locked her up, but I didn't want to lock her up. She's the wife of the President of the United States previously, and, the pres and she was Secretary of State. I said, that would be so terrible for our country. And then they try and do it to me. Isn't it terrible? Even in this area, you have Fani, F-A-N-I, Willis. I, I don't even know what it's all about. A lot of the people, they heard a lot of people, good people. Fani and her boyfriend, whatever the hell his name is, Wade. He was an expert on this. He was a — did you have any communication with the White — no, 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 I had none. Turned out he was there many days, many days coordinating with justice. I call it coordinating with the Injustice Department. No, I thought it would have looked terrible to take Hillary Clinton. Could have locked her up. She did so many bad things. But wouldn't that be — wouldn't that be terrible? Then I come into office. And we did it all right, too. We did it right. We didn't do anything wrong. We didn't do anything wrong. I'm just — they went after their political opponent. They went after their political opponent, and they made me more popular. Can you believe it? They made me more popular. <laughs> I've been investigated more than the late, great Alphonse Capone. This was not a nice person. He would take that tough guy to dinner right there. He's a tough guy. I know him. He'd take him to dinner. If Alphonse didn't like him, he was gone. He'd be in the foundation of a building somewhere. They'd never find him. They'd never find him. And Al Capone wasn't investigated as much as me. How about my family? I have the greatest family, and they're constantly getting subpoenaed. Constantly. Eric Trump, he's the king. He's a king. He's a good kid. He's an innocent kid. He's, he gets his appeal every day. Nancy Pelosi, a total thief. Think of it. She has, I think it was Visa, wasn't it, Marjorie? Visa stock. She owns a lot of Visa stock. She started off with nothing. He had nothing to. She start, now she's worth like $200 million or something. I'm always proud to say that I lost a hell of a lot of money doing this, but I'm proud to do it because I would not even think about it. This is the greatest thing. We're going to make the country great again. That's so — I got so many people. They're rich. Who the hell cares? I'm rich as hell. I don't give a damn. I lost — I lost billions. Billions. But think of this. Oh, the things I could have done. I could have made deals. I just don't want to do it. You know, it's such an honor to be president. I don't care if it costs you a couple of billion bucks. More than that. But think of this. She's got a big position in Visa. I don't know much about Visa. But she sold her position. That was okay. Except the following day, they announced that Visa is going to be indicted or something bad's going to happen to them by the Department of Justice. Does anything happen? Nothing happens. They sold a day before the news came out, and she walked away, and then the stock, I assume, went down like a rock, right? What a disgraceful. And then she sits back. Oh, we're going to do this or that. He's not a perfect — he's not a great American. Let me tell you, we are great Americans. The people in this room are great Americans. This man right here is a great American. We got a lot of great Americans in this room.
Early voting is underway in Georgia until November 1st, and boy, do I hear we're doing good, but I can't look. I don't want to say it because I want you to keep going. We've got to finish it off, you know? It's like I see these guys in a baseball game. They're going to win, and they get nice and complacent, and then they get their ass kicked in the last inning. I see the golfers walking down with a comfortable lead, and he said, oh, this is an easy game. This is so easy. And then he hits one out of bounds. He hits another one out of bounds. And he ends up losing a turn. We can't do that. We just got to focus. Everybody get out. Could I ask, could I take a free poll? You know, pollsters charge you a lot of money for this stuff, they, for nothing. I'm not even sure they actually go and interview anybody. I think they said, we interviewed 2,000 people. They probably didn't, but these are minor details. But I never complain when we're leading, and we're leading now in all the polls, so I can't complain. But, but let me do a free poll. Let me do a free poll, Bert. I want to do a free poll, Bert. So, who has voted already? Okay. Don't be embarrassed. Who has not voted yet but will? Well, it's very interesting. So you have a lot of early voters, and you have a lot, because we have a 50-50. So the rest of you have to get out and vote. We're leading by a lot, but get out and vote. We can't take any chances, right? Most important thing you can do, we're going to make our country great again. We're going to make America great again, but get out and vote. With your help, eight days from now, we're going to defeat Kamala. You know, she's not a nice person. Does anybody know that she is not a nice person? In case you had any ideas. Did you see she used the F word the other day? She thought she was talking without a camera on. She used the F word. Did you see that? Oh, it's terrible. If that ever happened to me, you would, it would have been front page headlines. Oh, boy, oh, boy. No, they got her using the wrong word, camera. She should be admonished for doing that, don't you agree? How about when her teleprompter clogged up on her? You know, it happens a lot. She was saying there are 32 days left, right, you know? Tuesday, the, well, right now there's seven days left. Can you believe it? So, a few weeks ago, she had her teleprompter go and blazing because she can't talk without a teleprompter. So, she's up there, and she got there are 32. It stopped. I knew immediately. It stopped. There are 32. 32. She was gone. 30. She said like five times. 32. Boom. Then it kicked in. Oh, did she get lucky. She got so lucky. But we're going to win back that beautiful White House, and we are going to, indeed, make America great again. We're going to do it fast. And I'm running a campaign of solutions to save our country. Kamala is running a campaign of demonization and hate. She really does. She's a hater. She's a hater. She was a lousy attorney general. She was a lousy DA. Horrible DA. She used to prosecute Republicans. She went after Republicans all the time. I know the feeling, but she used to go after Republicans. I had a friend who had a terrible thing happen to him and family member, horrible thing. She went in and he went in and uh, having to do with her daughter, they went in to see her when she was, I think, the attorney general or DA, but I think the attorney general. And it was very serious. A very serious crime was committed. When she heard that he was a Republican, she refused to see him. The meeting was all set up. Then she heard he was a Republican, and she said, I'm not seeing him. It's a disgrace. That guy hates her beyond anybody that I've ever seen. Remember when Crooked Hillary called Americans deplorable and irredeemable? You know, I watched that speech. I said, that's pretty bad. I thought, but I thought the irredeemable was worse than deplorable. When they said, she said, deplorable and irredeemable. Think about it. deplorable is bad, but irredeemable, isn't it worse, Mr. Senator? Brandon, you're the greatest. Think of that. 
irredeemable. So I said, man, she could be in trouble. It well, turned out it was the opposite, deplorable. I didn't care. But the deplorable was bad. Remember that? And all of a sudden, everybody's showing up. I am deplorable, everyone. <laughs> that was not, Marjorie, a great statement that she made regarding. I didn't think it was going to blow up like that. It, you know, was, that's why it's a very dangerous business. One word misspoken at a rally. And I don't use a teleprompter much, which I think you'd respect, frankly, because if I did. Because if I did, you'd be bored stiff. You'd be walking out of here by now. You'd say, oh, this is pretty boring. But it's fraught with danger when you don't use a teleprompter. Because one word and your political career is over. One little word misplaced, one little anything. Think of it. And isn't it great to have a guy that doesn't need to look at a teleprompter at all? Right? I don't need to. But that's why I say with Kamala, she can't make it without a teleprompter. Even with a teleprompter, she's no good. But she can't make it without a teleprompter. And if you're going to be in this business, 5%, I was telling somebody the other night, the other night, 5% of the time, teleprompters break. And outside, they're really bad. They blow off the stage. Rain hits them, and they blow up. It's a lot of bad things. So if you're going to run for office, make sure you don't mind not using a teleprompter, because you're going to have a lot of times when they're not there. And that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting to see her not have the use of a teleprompter because it's — but I hope it's going to be over very soon. I really do. I hope — and then I'm going to wish her well. I'm going to wish her well and hope we, we can say goodbye to her radical left lunatic policies. <laughs> Kamala is now doing something much worse than what she was talking about. The newest line from Kamala and her campaign is that everyone who isn't voting for her is a Nazi. We're Nazis. You know, years ago, my father, I had a great father. He's a tough guy. He used to always say, never use the word Nazi. Never use that word. And he'd say, never use the word Hitler. Don't use that word. It's like, I didn't even know why. Don't use that word. And then I understood it. And yet they use that word freely, both words. They use it, he's Hitler. And then they say, he's a Nazi. I'm not a Nazi. I'm the opposite of a Nazi. I don't know. So my father always used to tell me, don't use the word, you don't use, ever use the word Nazi. And, uh, you know, it's uh, incredible. Now, the way they talk is so disgusting and it's just horrible, the way they talk. And they, they don't mean it, even. They just want to do, you know, they think that we, they can sell. They've called me everything from a mad genius looking to take over the world to a very, very stupid person. I've covered from stupid to mad genius that will eventually succeed in taking over the world. Now, these are bad people. They've, they've covered everything. Let's see, last week, oh, that last week, uh, he's tired. You know what I've, I've done this stuff now for 58 days in a row, and I don't even feel tired a little bit. Not even a little bit. And the thing that bothered me is she said it as she's taking yet another day off, you know? I said, you know, she's taking a day off, like, a couple of days ago, she took like two days off in a row. And I said, you know, you're running for something that's so important. And in terms of importance, it's like Super Bowl times 100, right? Super Bowl maybe times 1,000. You don't take days off. You go every single day. No, I'm not tired. And they knew I wasn't tired. They're always tired, I tell you. I'm very tired. There may be a time when I'll say that. But, you know, they said that. That was their thing. That didn't work out, too. Actually, people got very angry. They said, the guy's gone 58 days in a row. He's still going, like, strong. And you would know in two seconds. If I was tired, you'd say, you know, he's tired. I'm not tired. I'm actually, like, enthused and inspired because we're close to winning this thing. We're close to winning it. We are very close to winning it, Bruce. This is the kind of outrageous rhetoric that is 
resulted in two assassination attempts in the last three months, probably. I, I could say that that's probably right. Our supporters are police officers, border agents, and I've had all of these people have endorsed me. Think of it. Virtually every police organization, sheriffs, law enforcement, in the whole country. I just got, not that recently, I just got the largest group of police officers in the country, 400,000 police officers, endorsed me just a few months ago. <laughs> Border Patrol. Border Patrol. Who would know better? They dealt with her. They said she never called. In almost four years, she was in charge. She never called Border Patrol. They just endorsed me, I mean, a couple of weeks ago. Most beautiful speech. Paul. The most beautiful speech. And he, uh, you know, he said that uh, not only is he a great guy on the border, he's the best president we've ever had, but he, and he said that. And he said, she's the worst president we've ever had, and she's the worst person in any border. She is at what, he, what they said about her. And, you know, it's not that easy for them to be doing that. But the entire Border Patrol, thousands of people, they said it was a unanimous vote. Now, that tells you more than any speech that I'm going to make or any speech that Bert is going to make. Say, what a wonderful guy I am, right, Bert? It's more important, the Border Patrol, more important, they know. But union workers endorsed me. Look at the Teamsters. The Teamsters, 62 percent of the Teamsters. Think of it. <clears throat> never happened before. The Teamsters. How about the Firefighters Union? Rank and file of the firefighters, they endorsed. Has, I don't think it's ever happened. Uh, and many, many people within unions, and a lot of people outside of the unions, and a lot of people, and because I'm going to bring businesses back to this country at levels that nobody has ever seen before. We're not going to let them sell to our people. And I was doing it already the last time, and then we had to take care of a thing called the China virus. We, had a, we did a great job. Never got the proper credit for it, but that's okay. They gave me credit for the great economy. They gave me credit for wiping out ISIS, which everyone said would take years, and it took us a matter of weeks, because our military is great. They gave me a lot of credit, but they didn't give me credit for that. Nobody knew what the hell it was, either. COVID, they call it COVID. I call it the China virus. <laughs> but we're close to World War II because we have people in the White House that World War III. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I had World War II. I had World War II. I had World War II veterans. I didn't realize the word veteran afterwards. Thank you very much. But we're, would those World War II veterans stand up? Because we have a couple here that are unbelievable. <laughs> World War II. Thank you. The guy looks better than I look. He looks better than Trump. Thank you. Thank you. Great veterans. And we are. We're closer to World War III than we've ever been. We've never been so close. And we're going to be — we're going to be closer yet, because we have people that don't know what they're doing unless we win. But even then, you have a period of time before January 20th. And we're going to — we're going to win this thing. We've got to win this thing. And if we don't win it, we're not going to have a country. It's not going to be good. But I hear — everything from what I hear is it's not only going to be a victory, it's going to be a big, fat, beautiful victory. And that's what we do. But Kamala is labeling more than half of the country as the enemy combatants, and she's calling them all fascists and Nazis, okay? But she's a fascist, okay? She's a fascist. How can Kamala Harris — and I don't use the name too much because nobody knows who the hell I'm talking about when I say Harris. If I said, how come Harris, and people look around, who is Harris? Kelly, they say, who is Harris? How can Kamala Harris lead America 
when she probably hates Americans because that's her ideology. She destroyed San Francisco. She's a very incompetent person running for president who stole the nomination from crooked Joe Biden and who's losing in the polls. She's losing in the polls. The fake news doesn't want to tell you that. The fake news doesn't want to tell you that. That's why we have to make it too big to rig, please. Too big to rig. And she and her group of very bad people are truly a threat to democracy. They're a threat. In less than four years, Kamala Harris has shattered our middle class. She cast the deciding votes that launched the worst inflation in your lifetime. Some say the worst inflation in the history of our country, by the way. She cost the typical American family over $30,000 in just higher prices alone. She killed 50,000 manufacturing jobs this year alone. 50,000. And you know what she does? She lies. She does ads. Donald Trump wants to close down Social Security. I want to close down Social Security. Just the opposite. I'm the one that's going to make Social Security strong again. We're going to make it strong again. She's going to close it down. And you know why she's going to close it down? Because all of the millions of people she's allowing into the country want to go into Social Security, Medicare, all this stuff. It's going to be worthless. She's going to close it down. But she does ads the exact opposite. Take anything. Oh, Donald Trump will raise taxes. No, no. I'm the one that's lowering taxes. She's the one that's raising taxes. They lie. I find her worse than Hillary. I find her worse. I see these ads, and it's so — and I go to my people. You have to do a, a countering ad, because she said that I was going to — I was going to get rid of Social Security. Can you — all I do is talk about, I will not touch Social — and I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to touch Social Security. You deserve that Social Security. We have liquid gold under our feet. We don't have to play games with great people. But I'm not going to destroy it by putting tens of millions of people into it, and then it is going to be destroyed. They're going to destroy the country, maybe even more importantly. Nearly 7 million men in their prime working age are missing from the labor force. Do you know that? They're not here anymore. They're not in the labor force anymore. Nobody knows that. The fake news never reports that. Now Kamala wants to raise the typical family's taxes by nearly $3,000 a year and impose a 33 percent tax hike on all domestic production. You know what that means? That means they're going to leave and they're going to go to Asia, they're going to go to Europe. If Kamala Harris gets four more years, your family will, frankly, never recover. You're never going to recover. You know how long it actually took? 1929, it took many, many years. You know, they thought they recovered in the 1940s. They didn't. It took all the way to the 50s to recover. It took years and years to recover. And that's what you're going to have. You're going to have a 1929-style depression. If I win, we will — and we're going to do this very fast. We're going to quickly build the greatest economy that the world has ever seen. We had that four years ago. We actually had that. We will rapidly defeat inflation. And very simply, I will make America affordable again. You know, the biggest thing I hear is groceries. You know, like when I was telling you before about the men and women's sports, I never hear that, but I hear about groceries. It's sort of basic, too. I hear about groceries. They're so expensive. A woman goes to the — this is an anecdote, but that happened. A woman goes to the store with three apples, an old woman, and then she sees the price of the apples, and she brings one back. She couldn't — that shouldn't be America. That should not be America. And that's what's happening, too. I will massively cut taxes for workers and all small businesses, and we will have no tax on tips, no tax on overtime, and no tax on Social Security benefits for our seniors. And I've just announced last night at Madison Square Garden — did anybody watch last night? Oh, well, that was good. But just announced that I will support a tax credit, full tax credit, for family caregivers who take care of a parent or a loved one. They deserve it. And they add so much to our country, and nobody speaks about them, but they do. It's a big factor, and a lot of people ask me about that, and I think it's fair. 
because we have so many different ways to make money. We have so many ways. And we're going to bring Elon in. Anybody. Anybody that can. Anybody can land a rocket the way he landed that sucker. You got to be It's like a 20-story building, right? That thing is coming in. I'm talking to somebody. I said, hold it. A very important person. I said, hold it. Boom. That was the last I spoke to him. Coming down, they said, oh, it's going to crash. It's going to crash into the gantry. I said, oh. And then those engines kicked in, and the fire and the flame starts pouring out of the left side. It starts pushing it over. And it comes down, and those big, beautiful arms hugged it like you hugged your child. <laughs> See? <laughs> See, that could have been a very embarrassing moment, right, Bert? I, he said, oh, that's so nice. He said, thank God. He said, child, like you hug your child. That was good. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. How beautiful was that, right? So he wants to, he doesn't need to be a secretary. He doesn't want to be a secretary. He wants to be a man that can cut costs, have you live even better. You're not going to be affected. But I think he said $2 trillion. And nobody would do it better than him, and he's going to do it very responsibly, and uh, we have to — it's amazing that, you know, he just wants the country. That's why he endorsed me very strongly. Elon Musk, the guy, is incredible. And he endorsed me so — and he — do you know where he is right now? He's campaigning in Pennsylvania. He's been doing it since he landed that crazy rocket ship. Right? No, he's been campaigning. He's been campaigning in Pennsylvania since he landed the rocket ship, you know? Think of it. You think he'd have a lot of other things, but he thinks it's the most important thing he can do because he knows that if we keep going and the way we're going with these people that are terrible people, that our country is finished. It's literally finished, and he knows that. And I think he's incredible. I think he's a real patriot, actually, if you want to know the truth. But I'll also make interest on car loans. This is great for Detroit, Michigan, also good for South Carolina and a lot of places that make uh, — do cars. You do a lot of car parts and things. You do a lot here. But we'll make interest on car loans fully tax-deductible, but only — here's a, a hitch — but only if the cars are made in America, if they're not made in America. That's pretty good, Marjorie. Right? Good one, right? I got called from a lot of big people in Wall Street. I, I call them the 182 guy. You know what 182 is? 182 IQ. That's about as high as they get. And uh, they'd call me up and they'd say, where did you come up with that idea? First of all, deductibility. Actually, when I went out with it, it was two weeks ago in Detroit. But then I said, wait a minute. It doesn't help us if we're buying a car from Japan. Why would we do the deductibility? But we'll do it if you build a car in Detroit or any place in the United States. We'll do it. So we get deductibility. You know how many cars that's going to produce? I think it's going to produce a lot. And they're going to be built in the U.S. And that's what we want. I will cut a record number of job-killing regulations. And we will end Kamala's insane electric vehicle mandate, which not everybody wants an electric car. Not everybody wants them. And they're great, you know? Elon does the best. I mean, he's just unbelievable with the electric. But it's meant to be a market. There's some I, — I think they're amazing, but they don't go far enough. Little things like that, they don't go far enough. And they are more expensive, right? And uh, there's a great market for them. But we want gasoline-powered cars, and we want hybrids. We, we don't want hydrogen. We do not want hydrogen cars, because they're extremely dangerous. You're not recognizable if something goes wrong. If something goes wrong, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, with that beautiful blonde hair, is driving down the highway <laughs> in a hydrogen car. And the problem with a hydrogen car, if something goes wrong, it's like the atom bomb went off. You're not recognizable. But they say, we think we have it under control. That's not good enough. They'll say, we thought it was Marjorie Taylor Greene riding down the middle of the turnpike, but she's no longer recognizable. We found some of her. I won't say. We love her. Stand up. Marjorie, stand up. <laughs> yeah. 
She's not, I will not let her get into a hydrogen car. She wouldn't do it anyway. We'll achieve energy independence and we will drill, baby drill. We're going to do that. We're going to get prices. And I will terminate the Green News scam and I will cut your energy prices in one year, 12 months. We're going to cut them in half 50%, 50%. One year. That's going to bring down everything. That'll bring down the cost of everything. We have it underground. We don't even use what we have. It's ridiculous. We get it from Venezuela. We get tar. I call it Venezuelan tar. To bring back millions of jobs, we will give our companies the lowest taxes, the lowest energy costs, the lowest regulatory burdens, and free access to the best and biggest market on the planet. And it won't be that way if we don't turn this thing around right away. We won't be that big, great market. But only for those who make their product here in the USA and hire American workers for the job. Otherwise, they don't get that benefit. And if these companies don't make their product here, then they will pay a tariff when they send their product into the United States for the privilege of competing with our workers. And if you look, we don't want them competing with us. We're going to keep them not competing with us. We want our companies to do great. We want our jobs to be great. We want high wages, as high as you can go, within reason. And we're going to protect those companies, and we're going to protect those workers. We're not going to have these companies stolen, and everybody loses their job. Won't happen. Won't happen anymore. Because the word tariff, to me, is the most beautiful word in the entire dictionary, okay? But we don't — we don't — we have people that, I don't know, they're either stupid or they're crooked. They don't want to let you use that, but we use it. We use it. I took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. Hundreds of billions. I would say they're not thrilled with me. Do you think they're thrilled that I'm leading in the polls? I don't know. You never know. Although I like, you know, I like, I like China and I like uh, President Xi. He's a fierce individual, very fierce. But he's a good, I mean, he loves China. He wants to take care of China. But I want to take care of the United States of America, right? And we'll also pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. Meaning, if China or any other country is charging us 100 or 200 percent tariff or tax, then we will charge them 100 or 200 percent tariff or tax in return. In other words, it's an eye for an eye. And when that happens, everything will just go away. And I will never apologize for defending America. I will protect our workers. I will protect our jobs. I will protect our borders. I will protect our families. You know, my people ask me, please don't say that, sir. It sounds so horrible. What was it? I said, I'm going to protect the women in this country. They said, oh, please, sir, don't say that. Don't say that. I said, why? It's true. I'm going to protect them from migrants coming into our country that kill seven people. You have them coming in. One supposedly killed 11 people. I'm going to protect them from having people come into our country and do damage to a woman or the family of a woman or anybody. And I think it's fine to say, I will protect the women of this country and the men of this country, and I'm going to protect everyone. Can you — they said, Please, sir, please don't say that. Uh, I think — okay, ready? Women. Should I not say that? Say, ready? Maybe — maybe they're right. I don't think so. Should I say I refuse to protect — I refuse to protect women. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. I will protect the women of our country. <laughs> yeah. I guess that settles that. I guess that settles that, right? All right. Well, we're going to protect everyone. And I will protect the birthright of our children to live in the richest and most powerful nation on the face of the earth. And as we rescue our economy, I will also restore our borders. Over the past four years, Kamala Harris has orchestrated the most egregious betrayal that any leader in American history has ever inflicted on our people. She is a disaster. 
She is a disaster. You just ask Border Patrol, they'll tell you she's a disaster. She doesn't know what the hell. She doesn't know what she's doing. She's violated her oath, eradicated our sovereign border, and unleashed an army of migrant gangs who are waging a campaign of violence and terror against our citizens. And we're not going to let it happen. Kamala has imported criminal migrants from prisons and jails, from insane asylums and mental institutions from all around the world, from Venezuela to the Congo. Oh, Congo, they're sending a lot of their people because, you know what? They don't want to take care of them. They're going to send them. They're sending them here. We have a lot. They come out of Congo prisons, but they come from Africa. They come from the Middle East. They come from a lot of places. And of course, they come from South America. The jails all over the world are being emptied into our country, and only bad can come out. And if you look at some of these country crime rates are down 50, 60, 70 percent because they're taking their criminals and they're releasing them into the United States of America. We're a dumping. We're a dumping ground. And she has resettled them into your communities to prey on them. really innocent American citizens. They didn't buy into this. The American public is outraged that Kamala is importing savage criminals who assault, rape, murder our women and our girls. I'm sorry to say that. I'm sorry to say that, but that's what's happening. Anyone who would let monsters kidnap and kill our children does not belong anywhere near the Oval Office. No, you have to protect our children. And nobody's seen this before. This is the first, and I wanted to do it because it's a special place for me. It's, it's so many good memories, but it's a special place, a very important place, and it's a very important state. And winning this state, we win this state, we win the whole ball of whack. So this is the first time we've shown it on the screen. So today I want to show America, and I want him to hear directly from a mother whose world has been absolutely shattered forever by Kamala's open border program for idiots to import illegal aliens and gang members into our communities. And I will tell you this, it's diff the first time I watched it. It's difficult to watch. I will tell you that. I saw it on the plane coming in. It's very difficult to watch, but it's so true. It speaks a thousand words. Please take a look. Sunday night, I asked her to not stay up super late because of her coming to work with me in the morning for us to do her summer school. She said, okay. I told her good night and I love you. I went to bed, not realizing that that was gonna be the last time I saw her. Hmm? We're best friends. Yeah. <laughs> Go shake it again. <laughs> I woke up to notice she wasn't in her bed. I'm in my heart trying not to lose my mind because I don't know where she is. I finally remembered her phone had a location on and her phone was pinging just two minutes down the road right behind the skate park. I start driving to the direction the phone was being pinged at and I see a couple cop cars with lights on. I see yellow tape, and immediately my heart drops and sinks to the bottom of my stomach. My daughter's hands and ankles were both bound. She was strangled to death, with left with no pants. And I know in my heart, she fought incredibly hard. She was not going down without a fight. We begin with two men we're learning are charged with capital murder tonight, accused of killing a 12-year-old girl. Police say these men strangled her before dumping her into that creek. Both men were in the country illegally. Apprehended, then released by Border Patrol less than three weeks before Jocelyn's death. The men accused of killing Jocelyn Nungare are affiliated with the gang known for brutal violence. Kamala Harris was in charge of immigration in our borders. If we had better border policies and not open borders and not these catch and release policies, I truly believe this all could have been prevented.
under her being vice president of this country, my daughter's life was ripped away from her. She had her entire life ahead of her. Happy birthday, dear Jocelyn. My daughter is six feet in the ground based off of policies that she allowed to keep. Kamala Harris did have one job and she not only failed, not me, she failed my daughter, she failed Jocelyn. You know, she was only 12. President Trump reached out, gave me his sincerest condolences as not a former president, but just as a father, someone who cares. I believe Donald Trump needs to be back in office. I can at least know that my next child will be safe in this country. And I got to know the wonderful mother of Jocelyn and a uh, wonderful woman. This is just terrible. And this is happening all over our country. This is happening so many. We have so many. You know the names. You know the names. And uh, we have to stop it. We can't let this go. It's going to get worse. It's going to get much worse. They're also now used to being in our country. You know, it takes a little while for them to get used to it. And it's getting worse that what they're doing to our country is horrible. And we're not — they're not going to do anything about it. The radical left lunatics, they're not going to do anything about this. And this is, uh, you know, Lakin, Lakin Riley. Uh, it's from your community. This is happening all over our country. And it's so sad. When I saw this, it's so sad. But I just uh, — that is a really good woman. So I got to know her a little bit the other day, and uh, we got to stop this. we got to stop it. we got to be — we got to be smart. We can't let this continue to happen to our country. Thank you very much. The day I take the oath of office, the migrant invasion ends and the restoration of our country begins. We have to restore our country. We've got hundreds of thousands of these people, hundreds of thousands. The savages charged with brutalizing and murdering precious Jocelyn are members of the same vicious Venezuelan prison gang, Trende Aragua that is taking over apartment complexes in Colorado and other places and unleashing a violent killing spree all over America. They were also linked to a brutal murder here in Georgia of a brilliant young nursing student. And you know who that is. Uh, just take a quick look at this. Just look at this. Was it a mistake? to loosen the immigration policies. Do you regret terminating it, given that migration has increased in the wake of that? And are you considering reinstating it, working with Mexico to do that? Failing to pass and fund this comprehensive plan has increased the challenges that we're seeing at our southwest border. No one knows this better than the vice president. The entire world is showing up here at our doorstep. They're crossing illegally, and they are expecting to get released here into the United States. There's a group of men walking up a stairwell at the edge at Lowry apartment complex in Aurora. All of them appear to be carrying rifles and handguns and the video shot earlier this month. One of the men can be seen talking on a cell phone. They all then gather around a door and go in. Another video clip shows men forcing a door open. This is a picture of gang members breaking into a vacant apartment so they could move a Venezuelan family in and then collect rent. This is our business plan, one gang member told a housekeeper. If he, the property manager, doesn't like it, we'll fill him with bullets. We 
police in the region say a Venezuelan gang known as Tren de Aragua has victimized thousands through extortion, drug and human trafficking, kidnapping and murder. Alvaro Bosa, a former Venezuelan police officer now living in Florida, says he fled his country in large part because the gang had become so powerful they could kill law enforcement like him with impunity. Bosa says a fellow police officer who refused to cooperate with the gang was shot 50 times. Now U.S. law enforcement, including Customs and Border Protection and the FBI, say the gang has made their way into the country. Members have been tied to hundreds of crimes from assaulting NYPD officers and a murder in Miami to shoot shooting two different NYPD cops who were trying to arrest one of its members in June. We hear from the mother of Jocelyn Nungary, the 12-year-old allegedly assaulted and killed in June by two illegal migrants. New court documents revealed they were a part of a Venezuelan gang. Brenda Aragua has given their members the green light to attack and kill police officers in Denver. We went out to some of Chicago's most violent neighborhoods to meet with current and former gang members who tell us that TDA first showed up when the city opened up migrant shelters in these areas and that now the Venezuelans are trying to move in. The city nonprofits have lined up um, to help the migrants that have come here, but nobody is helping the American citizens, the residents that are trapped. They told us that they really couldn't do anything unless something happened. It is not by any means an isolated occurrence, unfortunately. I call 911, no help comes for me. No help. We were on our own and we were left to die. As far as local law enforcement, I believe at this point that this is far beyond any one local law enforcement agency taking this on. And we need our state and federal partners to step in at this point. Thank you. And I think this is the single biggest problem. Inflation is terrible. The economy is terrible because of inflation. But uh, I will tell you, to me, this is the biggest problem that we have. I think it's number one. They have it at number three. I don't think it is number three. I think it's number one. We have to straighten it out. They're destroying the fabric of our country. The United States is now an occupied country. But it will soon be an occupied country no longer. November 5th, 2024, will be Liberation Day in America. And on day one, I will launch the largest deportation program in American history. We're going to get these criminals out. I will rescue every city and town that has been invaded and conquered. These towns have been conquered, you know. They have been invaded. And ca can you imagine? Just as though a foreign enemy was invading, a military was invading, and probably just as vicious or more vicious. And we will put these bloodthirsty criminals in jail or kick them out of our country, get them the hell out of here fast, to expedite the removal of Trende Aragua gang and MS-13 and all the other gangs that are now loving being in America. They're in America. They're creating havoc. I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 1798 to target and dismantle every migrant criminal network operating on American soil. And if they come back into our country, it's an automatic 10 years in jail with no possibility of parole. And I am hereby calling for the death penalty for any migrant that kills an American citizen or a law enforcement officer. Under Kamala, America is a sanctuary for criminal illegal aliens, and I will immediately ban all sanctuary cities in the United States of America. I will end catch and release. I will end all migrant flights. They fly thousands and thousands of migrants into our beautiful farmlands and into our communities that have no idea what's happening right now, but they're starting to find out, and they are devastated. And I will ban all welfare and federal benefits for illegals, and they won't come if you do that. They won't come. <laughs> Kamala's gross incompetence disqualifies her from being President of the United States. She is unfit for office. Everyone knows it. No one respects her. No one trusts her. No one takes her seriously. Everyone knows she is a low IQ individual. 
from humiliating our country in Afghanistan to the war in Ukraine to the nightmare on our border to her inflation catastrophe to her egregious hurricane response which your state also suffered worse since Katrina they say maybe worse than Katrina you can ask the people of North Carolina about that Kamala Harris is a train wreck I mean this is a train wreck who has destroyed everything in her path to make her president would be to gamble with the lives of millions of people she would get us into World War III because she is too grossly incompetent to do the job and then all of your sons and daughters will end up getting a draft notice the thing called the draft dad what's this oh congratulations you've been drafted into the military you're going to fight a war against a country that nobody's ever heard of isn't it true isn't it ridiculous our enemies are laughing at her but if we win our enemies won't be laughing anymore they never left they never left If we win, America will be feared and respected again. On issue after issue, Kamala broke it, and I will fix it, and we'll fix it very fast. But we are not just running against Kamala. I'd like you to listen to this one, because I believe it so strongly. She means nothing. She is purely a vessel. She can't put two sentences together. She's just like we were running against crooked Joe Biden. He was very similar, really. She never told us that. By the way, she put us in great danger because she never told us that. We're running against something far bigger and far more powerful than them, which is a massive, vicious, crooked, radical left machine that runs today's Democrat Party. We know a lot of the people, don't we, huh? Don't we, Marjorie, huh? Mike, we know a lot of those people, and that's what it is. It's a radical, vicious, sick machine that's become a very permanent fixture in the Democrat Party. It's running the Democrat Party. This is who we're fighting. These are the people who are doing such harm to our country with their open borders policies, their record-setting inflation, their Green News scam, and everything else they're doing. But we're not going to let it happen any longer. We're going to have the biggest victory in the history of our country on November 5th. We're going to make America great again. And on top of it all, Kamala says she would not do one thing differently from Joe Biden, which in itself is disqualifying. Please take a look. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. I stood there on the tarmac watching you check your watch. The chaotic and deadly U.S. evacuation from Afghanistan stunned Americans and the world and cost the lives of 13 U.S. soldiers. Would you have done something differently? There is not a thing that comes to mind. More than 13,000 illegal immigrants convicted of murder have been caught at the border and then released into the United States. An Afghan national is in custody today after being accused of plotting an election pay terrorist attack. The suspect entered the U.S. on a special immigrant visa. Got wrenching new details in the murder of Georgia nursing student Lakin Riley. The illegal immigrant suspect, who cops say committed the heinous murder, is a Venezuelan national who crossed the unsecured southern border back in 2022. Two men investigators say are in the country illegally from Venezuela are charged with capital murder and the death of Jocelyn Nungaray. A fifth illegal immigrant accused of attacking two New York City police officers over the weekend showed no remorse or regret. Would you have done something differently? There is not a thing that comes to mind. Only 18% say the economy is in excellent or good condition. U.S. inflation has hit a new 40-year high, increasing by 9.1% over the financial year. Authorities saying train day Aragua, which has been linked with more than 100 criminal investigations here in the U.S., has now been found operating its criminal enterprise in apartment complexes. Were you the last person in the room? Yes. So, if you want to end this disaster, you must get out and you have to vote. We're pleased to be joined today by Lieutenant Governor Bert Jones. Thank you, Bert. Great job. 
members of Congress, great people, warriors, really. Elise Stefanek. Elise, thank you, honey. Thank you. Great job. Rich McCormick. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Mike Collins. Thank you. Great. Great job, Mike. Andrew Clyde. Thank you, Andrew. These are great people. Jason Smith. Great guy. Great. Great guy. And a very quiet person. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Respected by everybody. By the way. And the next congressman. Thanks, Marjorie. And the next congressman from Georgia's 3rd Congressional District, Brian Jack. He's great. Also a woman, a friend of mine, a great person, former Senator Kelly Loeffler. Thank you, Kelly. She's doing a great job. And Doug Collins, one of my really good friends. Thank you, Doug. A courageous man, State Senator Brandon Beach. Thank you, Brandon. Georgia GOP Chairman. Oh, I'm going to like him. I think in seven days so much. I like him now, but boy, am I going to like him. Josh McCoon. Thank you, Josh. I'm going to like him. Josh, are we doing well? Looking good? Looking good, huh? I hear it's looking good. And the founder of Conserve the Culture, Michaela Montgomery. Where's Michaela? She is something. She is a good person. I also want to send our prayers to everyone here in Georgia and other states still recovering from the recent hurricanes. It's uh, unbelievable. I want to thank you, Governor, too. He's done a very good job. Very good job. We appreciate it very much. It's great. And if I win, you will get the support that you so desperately need, support that you're waiting for. Here are the facts. Kamala Harris is a radical left Marxist, rated even worse than crazy Bernie Sanders or Pocahontas herself. She destroyed our economy. She was an original creator of the Fund the Police movement. And anybody who wants to defund the police for even one week is not worthy of being President of the United States. Kamala vowed to abolish ICE. She wants to ban fracking. And as California Attorney General, she redefined sex tri — I think of this — sex child trafficking, assault with a deadly weapon, and rape of an unconscious person as totally nonviolent crimes. She pledged to confiscate your guns and endorsed a total ban on handgun ownership. Nobody's giving up their gun, I don't think. And she even called for free sex changes for illegal alien in detention. If you're an illegal alien in detention. And importantly, at taxpayer expense, by the way. And she lied about working at McDonald's. She never worked at McDonald's. <laughs> On top of all this, in conclusion, take a look. She wants to turn our military woke. I don't think that's happening. Go ahead. Happy Pride. Happy Pride Month. And actually, let's declare it a summer of pride. So you're a killer. Sir, yes, sir. Let me see your war face. Sir, you got a war face? Ah! That's a war face. Now let me see your war face. Ah! To the perpetuators, work towards a spirit of not just tolerance, but a spirit of acceptance. Are you sure, sir? Yes, sir. Of inclusion across all groups in the military. You are nothing but unorganized, grabastic pieces of amphibian shit. What pride means to me is celebrating that diversity is our strength as a nation and as an army. Looks to me like the best part of you ran down to crack your mama's ass and ended up as a brown stain on the mattress. We must set our sights higher and focus on intentional inclusivity because there are still far too many people out there not just LGBTQ individuals that feel marginalized. Happy Transgender Day of Visibility. Oh, you little maggot! You make me want to vomit! 
Gender identity issues are somewhat new. We all need to stand together against bullying and public attack. You had best unfuck yourself or I will unscrew your head and shit down your neck! According to regulation, men are allowed to wear clear nail polish while on duty. When I'm in uniform, this makes me feel a bit more feminine because my hands feel pretty when my nails are painted. Why is your foot locker unlocked? Sir, I don't know, sir! By the pile, if there is one thing in this world that I hate, it is an unlocked foot locker! You know that, don't you? Sir, yes, sir! Be able to undergo a full gender transition beyond hormones. Laser hair removal, Botox, lip injections, hair lowering. You slimy scumbag, get on your face and give me 25. Sir, aye aye, sir! I love working for Uncle Sam! I love working for Uncle Sam! Let me know just who I am! Let me know just who I am! We won two world wars. We won everything, but they're not going woke. Our people are not. I know them very well. We defeated ISIS, and uh, we did it in record time, a very few number of weeks. They said it was going to take five years. We did it in weeks. They're not going anywhere. In conclusion, with your vote this November, we're going to fire Kamala, and we're going to save America. We will cut your taxes, end inflation, Slash your prices, raise your wages, and bring thousands of factories back to America and back to Georgia. We will build American, we will buy American, and we will hire American. I will end the war in Ukraine. I will stop the chaos in the Middle East, and I will prevent World War III from happening. We will crush violent crime and give our police the support, protection, resources, and respect they so dearly deserve. We will strengthen and modernize our military. We will build a missile defense shield, all of it made in the USA, with a lot made right here. We will rebuild our cities, including our capital in Washington, D.C., making them safe, clean, and beautiful again. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and to always respect our great American flag. We will get critical race theory and transgender insanity the hell out of our schools. And we will keep men out of women's sports. I will defend religious liberty. I will restore free speech. And I will defend the right to keep and bear arms. After years of building up foreign nations, defending foreign borders, and protecting foreign lands, we are finally going to build up our country, defend our borders, and protect our citizens. And I will stop illegal immigration once and for all. We will not be invaded. We will not be occupied. We will not be overrun. We're not going to be overrun by anybody. We will not be conquered. We will be a free and proud nation once again. Everyone will prosper. Every family will thrive. And every day will be filled with opportunity and hope. And we will bring back the American dream. But for that to happen, we must defeat Kamala Harris and stop her radical left agenda with a landslide that is too big to rig. And that's where we are right now. So you need to get out and vote. For the past nine years, we have been fighting against the most sinister and corrupt forces on Earth. With your vote this election, you can show them once and for all that this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. Remember, it was hardworking patriots like you who built this country. And eight days from now, it is hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. After all, we've been together and we have been through a lot. We stand on the verge of the four greatest years in American history. With your help from now until Election Day, we will restore America's promise and we will take back the nation that we love. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. We will never give in. We will never give up. We will never back down, and we will never, ever surrender. Together, we will fight, 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 and we will win, win, win. November 5th will be the most important day in the history of our country. 
And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America healthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. God bless you. God bless you. Go out and vote, Georgia. Go out and vote. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you.